This is the iPhone 12. The new iPhone 12 offers a sleek new design, an all new processor and more. It's the first major design shift for the iPhone since the iPhone 10, with its squared off edges that match that of the iPad Pro and new iPad Air. Let's get this out of the way right now. If you have an iPhone 11, it's probably not worth upgrading to the iPhone 12, unless you're super nerdy or have money to throw around, which, in a pandemic, not many people do. But if it's time for an upgrade, that's to say if your phone is a few years old or more, you may well be considering the iPhone 12. And it makes sense. At $799 and in a world with much more expensive flagship phones, it's a compelling option. But is it really worth that 800 bucks? I've been testing the iPhone 12 to find out. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps support my work and I would appreciate that support. If you didn't watch the Apple iPhone event and you haven't read or watched much about the new iPhone 12, the first thing you'll notice about the device is its new design. It's a good look. It's kind of like a combination between the classic iPhone 5, which was largely loved, and the iPhone 11. It's a modern take on the iPhone 5, and I'm here for it. It feels good in the hand too. It does take some getting used to, and compared to the iPhone 11 Pro that I was using, the glossy back is a different experience. But despite the fact that the glossy glass on the back is kind of a fingerprint magnet, it helps make it more grippable, and a bit less slippery. On the front of the device, things look pretty similar to before. The iPhone still, unfortunately, has a notch. But the fact is that if you've used a notched iPhone before, you probably don't care about that notch. And if you haven't, don't worry, you'll get used to it quick. The display is a major upgrade on this iPhone compared to the last generation iPhone 11. It's an OLED display, which makes for deeper blacks, and it has a higher resolution. It matches the iPhone 12 Pro in terms of display type and resolution. However, the iPhone 12 Pro's display can still get a little brighter. Still, the display on this phone looks great. No, it's not high refresh rate, and while I wish it was, the iPhone is still touch responsive and quick. The back is also relatively similar to last generation. There's a dual lens camera in a square camera bump, just like before. The back is hiding something cool though. Magnets. MagSafe is making a resurgence on the iPhone 12, but unlike on the Mac, where it was used as a way to charge the computer without risking the cable being tripped on and dragging it to the ground, it's used to deliver fast wireless charging and a whole new ecosystem of accessories. It's a cool concept, but I didn't get any MagSafe accessories in time for this review. Eventually, I'll be reviewing the iPhone 12 Pro and I'll be using some MagSafe accessories for it. The iPhone is also available in a few new colors. This here is the blue iPhone 12, and I have to say, I love it. Ultimately, I keep my phone in a case, so the color doesn't really matter. But for the time that I've been using it naked, I've really appreciated the new color, and much more so than the green from last year. The glass on the phone is a new so-called ceramic glass. No, I'm not gonna drop test it. If you want that kind of test, check out Jerry Rig Everything. Apple says the new glass is more shatter resistant and that it's stronger than the previous generation iPhone 11's glass, but I would like it to be more scratch resistant too. As mentioned, the sides of the phone are squared off and I love the look. Around the edges, you'll get all the same stuff, including a ringer switch, power button and volume rocker. And of course, you'll get a lightning port. It's a bummer, but not unexpected. Even though the iPad Pro, iPad Air and even new Beats headphones have USB-C. On the side of the device, there's also a strange window and you might not know what it's for. Turns out it's for the new 5G connectivity, specifically for the super fast but barely available millimeter wave connectivity. Apple says it shouldn't really affect 5G performance if you cover that window with a case. Speaking of 5G, we kind of got to talk about it. Here's the thing, 5G isn't really something you need to worry about right now. Millimeter wave or the ultra fast 5G offered by the likes of Verizon isn't available anywhere except for a few street corners. And sub six, which is much more widely available, matches 4G speeds most of the time and is only a little bit faster the rest of the time. But the good thing about the iPhone is that it lasts for four or five years, and 5G might be a lot more important then. I don't recommend buying an iPhone for 5G support, but I am still glad that it works on 5G networks, mainly because it means the phone will still work with the latest gen tech in a few years. If you're buying an iPhone 12 anyway, it's a nice added bonus, but don't buy the iPhone for its 5G support. Of course, perhaps more important for anyone who doesn't have 5G access is the camera performance. The iPhone 12 has a dual lens camera with a wide sensor and an ultra wide sensor, and while I wish it swapped the ultra wide for a telephoto lens, it's still relatively versatile. The best thing about the iPhone 12's camera is its consistency. The phone is able to take colorful, natural photos pretty much all the time, including in low light. The camera on this phone can take in a little more light and it can make night mode shots look a whole lot better. Generally, the camera on the iPhone is great. It's among the best cameras in a phone at all. And while it's clear the iPhone 12 Pro's camera will be a little bit more versatile, those that get a standard iPhone 12 will be happy with what's on offer here. The iPhone 12 features Apple's new A14 Bionic processor, which is the company's most powerful chip to date. Here's the thing, Apple doesn't advertise how much RAM it includes and Qualcomm is quick to point out performance gains in its chipsets, but the iPhone's performance is still far better than any Android phone. That may not be a huge deal right now. 
After all, your high-end Android phone can still handle anything you can throw at it. But in three years, your Android phone will be slowing down, while your iPhone 12 will probably perform almost as good as the day you got it. That's where performance really matters. Benchmarks confirm how incredible the iPhone 12's performance is. The device scored a massive 1591 on Geekbench 5's single-core score, and 3965 on the multi-core score, beating out any other phone I've tested. That includes the likes of the Galaxy S20 FE, the OnePlus 8, and other flagships for the year. The battery on the phone performs great too. In my battery test, which involves streaming a YouTube video over a Wi-Fi for three hours at full brightness, the phone ended the test with 75% left. That's pretty much on par with most other flagship phones for this year. It's not amazing, but it's not bad either, and it'll easily last you through a day of even heavy use. The iPhone 12 is an incredible phone. It performs like a beast, has a great camera, an awesome display, and more. In fact, it's so good that it will probably be hard to argue for buying the iPhone 12 Pro once I can finally get my hands on it for a review. But it's also a little more expensive than the iPhone 11. At $799 or 829 if you buy it unlocked, iPhone prices are continuing to creep up and that's no good, but I still think it's worth it. If you've already bought into Apple's ecosystem, have a bit of money to spend on a phone and want something that's going to last for years to come, then the iPhone 12 is absolutely a great phone to go for. You'll get almost everything you'll get on the iPhone 12 Pro at a cheaper price and including its incredible performance and stunning new design. If $800 is a little steep for you, then you can still get the still awesome iPhone 11 or go for a the even more affordable $400 iPhone SE. There's also the new iPhone 12 mini, which offers the same specs, but at a cheaper price and in a smaller body. I haven't had a chance to check out the iPhone 12 mini, but it's also a great option. But if you can afford it, get the iPhone 12. You won't regret it. Thanks again for watching this video. And again, please subscribe if it was helpful to you. You can get the iPhone 12 for yourself using the link in the description. My name is Christian and I'll see you next time. See ya.